So then I realized acting, it's really about not acting. It's about letting the emotions inside of you come out and represent moments. Are you dating anyone? I just think we should know if he has a girlfriend. Do you? Yeah, I do. Beck Oliver is by far the least used character in Victorious. Because of this, many tend to say that Beck is a flat and boring character. And honestly, I don't entirely disagree. What makes this frustrating though is the fact that Beck has the potential to be a character that really stands out. Not for crazy antics or for witty one-liners, but for being the only main character that doesn't sing. Except for those few times. Beck's passion in life is to be an actor, but unfortunately, most acting scenes in Victorious are usually relegated to a quick joke at the beginning of an episode or a background scene for a much greater plot. Because of that, Beck's main talent never really gets to shine in any way, despite there being a variety of opportunities where being an actor would come in handy. But how could we fix this? What barriers prevent Beck from breaking out of his blatantly basic boring and borderline brain-dead personality? Can Beck be brought back from the bottomless pit of boredom and beauty? You can bet on it. There's not enough people with originality, so here I am to save the day, Janiac. Your lemonade, sir. Thanks. Hey, why is it pink? It's pink lemonade. I've never seen any pink lemons. There are no pink lemons. So what makes it pink? Beck is easily the calmest of the main characters, which you definitely need in a show like Victorious, but even he has his limits. Can someone please take me to a car door so I can slam my face in it? I have a car. He also rarely passes up an opportunity to make a snarky remark, because a lot of his signature moments are more subtle, Beck is often overshadowed by the other characters. The same can be said of his plots in the show. You see, all of Beck's main plots revolve around other characters. Whether it's Tori, Robbie, or especially Jade, he usually takes a back seat to their crazy antics, playing a reactive role to their positive or negative actions. This is a huge misstep, because Beck is incredibly talented. The show establishes that he knows enough about mechanics to fix Robbie's car, he's savvy enough to write and direct his own plays, but above all else, he has a deep-seated love for acting and drag racing. <laughs> no, no, the other drag racing. As I mentioned in my Victorious vs. Taina video, links in the description down below, Beck would be a lot more interesting if we got to see him use his talent more, and I don't just mean for plays. Say for example, in Terror on Cupcake Street, when Beck has to confront the guys that jumped him and Andre, imagine if we got to see Beck use his acting skills to get them out of that situation. Or even in Locked Up, how interesting would it be to see Beck use his acting skills to convince the inmates to help the Victorious gang find a way out of prison? It doesn't have to be realistic, because... Well, it's Victorious, so it wouldn't be that far-fetched to see him use his acting to charm his way in and out of situations. Speaking of charm, the most overstated thing about Beck is, well, his looks. Girls are always swooning over this guy, and sometimes even guys are. And if there were any doubts that we, the audience, are supposed to believe that Beck is an object to be desired, I'd like to point out that Beck is the only guy in Victorious that has kissed all four girls. Lucky guy. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, another thing about Beck that should have been played with more is his leadership role. Let me ask you, who would you say is the leader of the Victorious gang? It's definitely not Robbie or Trina. Kat's way too ditzy. Jade probably wouldn't want to be the leader. Andre usually leads everything musical, but outside of that, he often plays a supportive role. So that leaves us with Beck and Tori. I'm sure many would default to Tori, because she's the main character. And in many cases, yeah, Tori tends to call the shots. But remember, Tori is the new girl. The rest of the gang have known each other longer than they've known Tori. So the leader of the V gang, before they met Tori, would most likely have been Beck. There are a few subtle hints to this too, the most notable being whenever the gang needs a ride somewhere, 9 times out of 10, Beck is the one driving. 
even though we know Tori is the only one that can't drive. If the show really set Beck up as the gang's leader, I feel like he'd be easier to identify as more than just the pretty boy. The least the writers could do is write him consistently. In I Party with Victorious, Beck states that he can't be scared. For the rest of the episode, Psychowitz tries and fails to scare Beck. But then there are a bunch of episodes where Beck is clearly shown being scared. Brain Squeezers, Terror on Cupcake Street, and Wi-Fi in the Sky are just a few examples. How much more interesting would it be if Beck genuinely couldn't be scared? It'd be the perfect way to make him zany without taking away from his level-headedness or leadership status. You could even say it has something to do with his acting skills, or maybe it has something to do with his tragic home life. No, it's cool, it's just, you know, most high school guys don't live in an RV parked in their parents' driveway. Well, my parents said if I live under their roof, I gotta live by their rules. So your roof? My rules. Throughout the show's run, there are more than a few references to Beck being a rebellious child. But before I dive into that, I want to share something very important about Beck Oliver with you. Listen closely, because you might miss it. Something I couldn't help but notice while re-watching Victorious, something that genuinely caught me by surprise about Beck's character, something I think is constantly understated about Beck's life and why he's awesome, is the fact that... Beck Oliver... IS CANADIAN! True North strong and free, baby! Anyway, Beck chooses to live in his RV called the Silver Streak to get away from his parents' rules. So right off the bat, we know that Beck isn't in complete agreement with the way his parents are raising him. Is this because he's an irresponsible teen, or are his parents just too strict? We never find out, but I will say there are a few hints that Beck's parents strongly disapprove of his relationship with Jade, so maybe that has something to do with it. Maybe Beck loves Jade so much that he was willing to move out from under his parents' house. Again, that's just speculation. Something that may give us a bit more insight into Beck's character, however, is his RV. More specifically, the things inside his RV. A European license plate, caution signs for hard hats and face shields, a Chinese checkers wallpaper, a jukebox under a no loud music sign, a neon pink bullhead, a pool table clock, a beer sign, a whiteboard with Beck's rules, a fish tank that he never cleans, and much, much more. It's a shame we're never given any real explanation for some of them, for instance, why doesn't Beck clean his fish tank? Is he blissfully ignorant of the fact that his fish will die if it isn't cleaned? Or is he just lazy? Anything I say about his RV would just be speculation, so if you want to hear my thoughts on Beck's RV, let me know in the comments down below. I just think I like dating a girl who, you know, fights back. I mean, a girl who's got strong opinions, you know, and a big mouth. Because it's not easy. Easy's boring. At school, Beck is arguably the most popular guy there, with many girls and guys clamoring for his attention. So it comes as quite a surprise when we learn that Beck and Jade have been together for a while before the first episode. I've spoken enough about this relationship in my previous videos, just pick one. But something I may not have mentioned is the fact that Beck seems to find amusement in Jade's jealousy. Either Beck is trying to teach Jade a lesson on not jumping to conclusions, or Beck is a total jerk that loves playing with his girlfriend's insecurities. Beck and I aren't splitting off. Well, dude. I'm kidding. Beck and I are not splits, Bill. Well. Is there something you want to talk about? <laughs> kidding. You decide. After Jade, the closest person to Beck would be his best friend Andre. Or so we're told. Has anyone ever noticed that Beck and Andre, the two best friends in the show, are never actually shown hanging out by themselves? It honestly feels like Andre spends more time with Tori than anyone else. Again, a missed opportunity. Why not have Beck and Andre working together more often? Showing their dynamic as best friends would be a cool way to demonstrate how an actor and a musician need to work together to produce a great play, movie, or musical. But no. 
Instead, we get an episode where Beck and Robbie hang out, and you know what? Their dynamic is pretty cool. I was kind of having fun with this whole car fixing thing. Because of all the girls who came by to watch. Dude, now you got a car. I'm not following your cool guy logic. Girls like guys that have cars. I've said before that it's interesting how Robbie is allowed to hang out with the Victorious gang despite how unpopular he probably is compared to the rest of them. So to see Beck not care about any of that really does show that Beck isn't totally vain or narcissistic. Beck treats Kat like a little sister and he always makes an effort to comfort her, the one case where Jade doesn't get jealous. I think Trina is the only person Beck openly dislikes, and for good reason. Trina is always making passes at him even though he has a girlfriend, or has said many times he's not interested. But her sister Tori is another story. Can we all agree that Beck really likes Tori? The guy makes it pretty obvious from the start. During the alphabetical improv, he could have easily said, let's not, in response to Tori's kiss me. But no, he instead says, let's do it. Bear in mind, this is while he's dating Jade, and while she's in the room. There are many instances of Beck going out of his way to help Tori after this too. Why is this guy so caught up with Tori while he's dating Jade? It just doesn't seem right. And even after Jade and Beck break up, Beck seems pretty eager to get with Tori right away. To make matters worse, once Beck is free from Jade, in driving Tori crazy, a bunch of girls go to his house regularly just to get a car ride with him. And he's totally fine with it. Does Beck just like the thrill of the chase, or is something more sinister at play here? I mean, his locker is transparent. Transparency can mean openness, emptiness, purity, or clarity, but he claims it's transparent because he has nothing to hide. But what if it actually meant that he has a very, very open mind? Beck Oliver had a lot of potential to be a really great character. Unfortunately, a lot of his skills and talents are overshadowed by everyone else. I'm not saying you have to make him crazy to go against that, keep him zen. I just think there's a lot of things he has that could have been pushed more to the forefront. If they did that, then they could really flesh him out and make him a well-rounded character. By the way, what would you call the Victorious Gang? The V-Gang or Gang Tory? Or do you have a cooler name for it? I was just wondering while writing this script. I ended up settling for V-Gang, but Gang Tori's pretty neat too. Speaking of Tori, my Victorious cover album is set to release on all major music platforms on Christmas Day of this year, 2020, but you can pre-order it on iTunes right now. Be sure to follow me on Spotify and Instagram, and if you're subscribed to this channel, be sure to subscribe to my backup channel, Janiac Tunier, in case anything happens to this one. And be sure to check out the merchandise. All the links to everything I just mentioned are in the description down below. Until then, I'll leave you with this. This is gonna be a hard one.